Hi guys. Hey, hey, hey. They gave us a room. We, we're loud. <laughs> we're no longer in the glass case of emotion. Look, we have bookshelves. We got a big bookshelf that we're working to fill. <laughs> we have a lot of space to fill. I didn't realize how big these bookshelves are. When we first got them, I was like, oh, we'll fill them in like two seconds. No. And then you put them up there and I'm like, oh, we have like no books. <sighs> so that means we have to. Do you know why? Because we give them all away. So we got to stop doing that. No more giving away. Just kidding. Uh, cheers. Cheers. Happy tea, time. Happy tea time. I have a spicy chai and it's real strong. Too spicy? Oh, that's a spicy meatball. It got me right here. Hi, <laughs> guys. Is it the one that we got from India? There, we're in the back. Mm. Hold on there. No longer in the glass case of emotion. Technical things. You heard us. Um, it's, it's not from India. Yours is from India. Mine's from India. The green tea. So, hey everybody, welcome to Tea Time with Team Epic Grades, our weekly live video chat where we talk about young adult books and other nerd things. If you are tuning in for the first time, welcome, welcome, <laughs> welcome. We are going to get into it more towards the end of Tea Time, but this is our last Tea Time on Ustream. As of next week, we it's will a be. Feel. Yeah, maybe we should just go into it now, I guess. Uh, next week, we will be on YouTube.com slash Epic Reads. Um, that's where we will be broadcasting the Book Shimmy Awards, which are next week. Yay! Book Shimmy, can you look at that? It says, Ooh. Ooh. it says Book Shimmy. It, Trust us. Yeah, I'll show you the other end. See? <laughs> Emmy on the back. <laughs> Emmy. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> Book Shimmy Emmy Awards. <laughs> so, basically, um, next week, the Book Shimmy Awards will be on YouTube, but then going forward, all tea times, Wednesdays at 3.45, will also be on YouTube. YouTube. So if you aren't subscribed to our channel yet, we highly suggest you do that. That way, YouTube will send you an email when we're going live. It'll yeah. remind you and all that there's, good stuff. There's lots of reasons why we're doing it, mainly because we're going to start doing more things on YouTube. So mm -hmm. we just want them all kind of in the same place so you're not going like, where are they going to be this week and all that kind of stuff. Also, YouTube just seems like, I don't know, I mean... It's hard to tell it's people YouTube. to be like, hey, go to ustream.tv slash channel slash epic epic reads. You're like slash oh. nine five six eight two three <laughs> X X X X O zero nine X. Um, um the only thing that we're bummed about is um, we'll lose the Twitter uh, yeah. stuff. So we're relying on all of our tea time people. Peeps. We need a what name. The kids say? We need a name for like fans of tea time and or epic reads. Not the tea party. <laughs> no. Uh, but we need all of you to sort of help get everybody transitioned over to YouTube. So if you have blogs and you've blogged about us before, we love you. Thank you. Thank you. We adore you. Uh, please let your fans and your followers know that Tea Time will now be over on YouTube as of next week. Yeah. And right after this Tea Time today, we're going to jump over to YouTube and like do a little practice run because we're real awkward with it so if you want to watch us fail at te new technology feel free to join us after feel free because we're gonna have a little it's gonna be a little shorter today yes um um let's check in how are you guys doing how are you guys doing what are you reading feel free to continue tweeting at us yeah use the hashtag tea time hashtag hashtag tea time um, um what are you reading i i have just you finished have, which, are you just Sorry, I shouldn't talk with my mouth full. <laughs> I just finished Maybe One Day uh, by Melissa Cantor, um, which is a straight contemporary. Um, it's about best friends. It's not a love, it's a different kind of contemporary besties. love story. It's besties. besties. And it's so sweet, and it reminds you why people are, like, important to you. Like, even if you you start to stray on different paths. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I've had my same best friend from high school, like, she's still my bestie, but our, mm -hmm. we are completely different people now, and that kind of, like, of happens. My best friend from growing up, we had always, like, had those plans to, like, oh, we're going to move to New York, and she's going to become a makeup artist, yeah. and I was going to be an actress, and then... You're going to live together forever. It was going to be wonderful. Yeah. And then I left Ohio, and she <laughs> stayed, and then our, like, lives could not be any more drastically different. Yes. But we're yeah. still best friends. Yeah, my, fr my best friend lives in the country of North Carolina, like, in the hills. Mm -hmm. And she's like, what is it like to go to a bodega? Bodegas are the one. It's her birthday this week, and I'm going to visit her. And, like, every time I go to her house, I'm like, why can't we eat dinner at 11 o'clock? I don't understand. The very first thing that I always say when I leave New York is I'm like, where's the where's the bodega? Yeah. Like, where can I get a sandwich? Um, I might need some toilet paper on the fly. 
<laughs> Where can I get my, you know, I, I don't a, have any pets, so I just need, yeah. like, to pet something, so I just go to my, the closest bodega, the bodega cat. They always have cats. Uh, so I just finished Maybe One Day, and I'm moving on to something you've read already and told me I will love. Um, well, today is, I was going to say something about besties, but today we're giving away um, 10 copies of wow. Salvage by Alexander Duncan. It doesn't go on sale until April 1st. I read this right before Christmas. You blew it's a, it. It's a long book. I mean, it's like 520 pages, but worth it. This is the first book I've read that I would classify as a new genre. Woo, name um, it. Feminist sci-fi. Yes, please. I don't know if there are, are other examples of feminist. I mean, I'm sure there's examples, plenty of feminist, like, fantasy. But yeah. this is, like, space, but fe oh, <laughs> it's awesome. It's, like... <laughs> It's like it's kind of everything I want. It, basically, this girl she is brought up in what is pretty much polygamy, a polygamous colony yes. in space, um, where men dominate their society and women are basically they all they're they are locked in at night. They're not allowed to do anything. They're not allowed to learn how to read or write or any of that. So basically, their functions are very very limited. And this girl she. Um, Gets a little naughty with the boy from Ooh, the next comedy. Is he dreamy? He is dreamy. So she has some sexy times with the boy and her and gets caught. And so they are they want to basically kill her and just send her out in the airlock. But she escapes and goes down to Earth. And this is the first time she's ever like left her spaceship, left like been outside of her realm, and it's like her just struggling and making her own way and becoming the woman she was meant to be. Yes. It's so good. I'm so pumped for this. So now you guys know why this yeah. is my immediate next read. It's got like a lot of like Battlestar-ish flavor. It's got some um, uh, Firefly in there. It's just, it's a really, really so well-written story. I'm gro going back to this because mm -hmm. I'm very... Like, very uncharacteristically of me, I did three contemporaries in a row. That's what I... Okay. So I decided for 2014 that my um, my goal was to read as many standalones as possible. Yeah. Because I find that I get in less of a reading slump if I read standalones. Because yeah. it's a complete story from start to finish. Feels good. And I, I go through them faster. This is a standalone. So points for that. Cheers. Um, but in the last week... And I've been reading a ton of, like, contemporary yeah. stuff. And it's funny that you mentioned besties because I read, I think it's from this one, The Promise of Amazing by Robin Constantine. And there was a line in there that a guy said to his friend, besties with testies. And I thought that was really funny and I had never heard of that before. <laughs> besties with testies. But That's I'm pretty really sure it's from this one. Um, I, so I read this and The Distance Between Us by Casey West back to back, which was awesome. Yeah. Because they're both, like, contemporary romance with, yeah. like, two polar opposites. And I enjoyed them both. Highly. Highly. If I had to pick a favorite, though, I'd probably go with The Distance Between Us. Mostly because the main character has this incredible sense of sarcasm that I just I feel. I feel her. Hmm. I feel her. Feel her. Um, and? And I read... And one, this is my first ever one sitting book. I've never just sat down and read a book without ever getting up. Yeah. And I read Never Fall Down by Patricia McCormick in one sitting till 2 a.m. in the morning. And it's, it's the hard. second book I've ever read that I actually cried. Like, actual tears. Just, like, water spouted out of. Not like, oh, that was sad, but like, genuinely being like. <gasps> <laughs> reading this because I had just had zero knowledge of the Khmer Rouge and like the atrocities I, yeah. committed. I mean I don't like most of the time most of the time I have like a general I'm like yeah I know that happened but like then I, I never that. like yeah I'm like yeah I know it. Yeah and this is like so such an important read it's it's very graphic extremely graphic so if you are at all sensitive to like bloody pretty grotesque scenes then consider yourself warned but it's it's, but you should read it's it. It's important. So it's our book club pick this month. So also, Margot deserves a gold star for three books in one week. I know, right? I got my foot sliced up, so all I have to do is read because I can't do anything else. Elevate it. You want me to show you? No, I don't. <laughs> she got some of the nail of her toe taken off. No, and I made. I, I made. <laughs> he cut out half of it, and no. I and I like. He was like, "Do you want to look away?" This part. I was like, "No, show me. Show me the grit." 
Ugh. Oh, um, I see. Uh, I live to read. Um, oh, it's on your Isha says, Margo, you must read The Fault in Our Stars. And I was thinking when you said this was the, only the second book that made you openly weep. I know. I know. Like, it's, I, ca I can't just do wait. I can't do the cancer thing yet, though. I know. My dad is cancer, so I can't. I'm not, I'm not emotionally She's prepared for that. But I will. I've got a copy, a signed copy. Stole it from our boss. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, what are you guys reading? <laughs> there are so many books on sale this week. There are zero. zero. Like, zero Harper books on sale this week. I don't know how to function. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so. Uh, <laughs> she started the week by sending IMing me a gif of a cat <gasps> on a computer going, meow, 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 meow. meow. What was it? It was like, find that was pretty single cats in your neighborhood? Yeah. Oh man, it I was should, really good. I should find that and tweet. That's that. what she does when there are no books on. <laughs> I go and find dumb things on the internet because I have nothing to do. <laughs> Just kidding. There's um, there are lots of things to do. <laughs> There's lots of things going on. Um, um, especially, mostly getting excited about the books that are coming. <laughs> there is a one, the one fan fiction contest going on on Epic Reads on the blog right now. Write the opening scene, 500 words or less, the opening scene to the one, and you could win an iPad mini with a custom case that has the one designed on it. Um, I thought about this on the train. Yes. I can't enter, obviously, as a Harper employee. Do it. But I wanted it to just be three sentences. Can you share them with the yes. community? America makes out and has babies with Prince Maxon. <laughs> The the end. end. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be amazing if it was like this whole book and it was just the one page and then it was like over. <laughs> It'd be like the ultimate troll. Yeah. Book trolling. That would be awesome. That's why Kira Cass <laughs> is the writer of the book and not me. <laughs> she will make you feel things about it. Author Madison just tweeted, I'm reading Fangirl So Many Feels. I See, need to loan you my copy. I have it. There was the there was a time on Amazon where both Fangirl oh, and Eleanor they were like Park a dollar. were 99 cents. And I scooped them up on my e-reader, but I haven't had time to read them yet. Um, so Caitlin Vanessa says, how often does that happen? Zero YA Harper books on sale. We just learned that, we were wondering about that too. We were like, how come there's like, one day where there's zero, and then one day when there's like yeah. 50. Not bucks. next week, but the week after, there's like a bunch. There's and a bunch. I've asked this question. <gasps> Ghost. <laughs> I've asked this question like in meetings with people that know things, and they, like, it has to do with like bookstores and delivering them and like mm. how a bookstore runs. So a bookstore can't like handle the amount? Like, if they can't handle this jelly? Like, maybe they do inventory and restocking of their store on one part of the month and maybe not necessarily. Are there. any retailers watching who can clarify this further? Okay. Because we don't really know things about publishing. <laughs> we just know that we like books. <laughs> um, Book Hangover says, the books are coming. OMG, OMG, <laughs> I need them now. Um, Princess Oops, 5492 sorry. is reading Along for the Ride by Sarah Dessen. You should probably try one of these two mm -hmm. as well. Um, so good. Because, you know, if you're in the contemporary, mm -hmm. the run of things. Mm -hmm. Oh, also with these two, they both had um, sexy scenes in there that yeah. give me tender chicken. You just outed yourself for saying that. I'm sorry. I'll explain that some other time, aka never. Um, there's a scene in um, The Promise of Amazing where they hook up in this, like, old 1800s cottage, and there's a lot of, Ooh. like, embracing and taking of the clothes off, and then Ooh. there's one in here where there's countertops, like, lifting up and putting on the countertop. I... I'm a big fan of a lift up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mainly because it doesn't ever happen in real life with such grace. Yeah, because when the guy goes to lift me up, he's like, oh, oh I can't. <laughs> and I also have no core muscles to like support or <laughs> sustain that like perfect angle where. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Now we're gonna little Sorry. car personal. It's the new. It's the new. It's space. New it's new. It's new. <laughs> um. And what else is going on? Ooh. All the things of the exciting books are coming out. We've got a look at Panic. Oh, yeah. There is the first four chapters of Panic that are on epicreads.com, the blog, as well, right now. But we have... Lauren wrote a... Like a... The origin, origin story. I want it so bad. Because you have read Panic. I've read Panic. I love Lauren Oliver's writing. Like, it's one of my faves. Um, she wants to make love and to And I her just writing. want more of it. I do. 
<laughs> I want it to pick me up and put it <laughs> Anyway, um, so she has these origin stories um, that she will release if all of her fans pre-order the book. So do it. Do it. It's amazing. It is definitely a return to Lauren Oliver at her standalone greatness. I like to call it classic Lolliver. 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 Because we love her. We love Lolliver. Lolliver. Um, uh, Into the Still Blue. The trailer went live today on tour.com. Um, actually, if you go to epicreads.com, the blog, right now, like right, right now. now, like like right now, it's up on our blog, as well as the first 80 pages. Boom. The book doesn't go on sale until the 28th. Where is it? It's probably underneath me. No, it's up. It's probably underneath the computer. Oh, you see, here's my computer stand. Uh-oh. Sorry, books. Um, does it go on sale until the 28th? But 80 pages. I read it. It's so good. It's definitely one of those. Hey, oh my god! It makes it's so the ending you needed. It's so satisfying. It's so. Oh, it's just, it's just such. It's just so good. I love the world. And the characters are so good. And it's. Like, it is Perry and Arya's story, but it's not really. It's mm-hmm. like every, it's just like this epic. It's an epic. It's not just them. It's not about just them. No. It's more than that. Yeah. I love it. Um, you guys will not be disappointed, so start reading. And I mm-hmm. think that um, Veronica tweeted about, like, saying that if you read it now, mm-hmm. the first 80 pages, you're like an eighth of the way done. So you can, you can kind of nice. eat it for the next two weeks in mm-hmm. small morsels. Read it slowly. So you basically don't have to wait for it anymore, is mm. what we're saying. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Marinate. <laughs> Think of it as, like, a nice steak marinating. Mm. Slowly. Or, like, fine wine. I don't know. That, that didn't really work. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's see. Love to Dazzle says, definitely looking forward to Panic. Yeah. Paperback Heart says, Into the Still Blue was such a great ending for the series. Yes. Mm-hmm. I agree. I just said it. Salazar707 says, I still haven't read the Delirium trilogy, but I'm close to getting Panic. You should get it. Are you close to Panic? Are you are you a Before I Fall fan? I mean, here's the thing. It's I like, haven't read Before I Fall yet. I know, I know, I know. Before I Fall, I mean, it's hard to say because, like, it's not the same book as Before I Fall. Like, it's not, it's like a totally kind of different space and world. But, and but it's also still not Lauren's style. Yes. But she's so good at mood writing. Like mm-hmm. she sets a mood immediately, and you're mm-hmm. like, okay, I am in this space, and that's what I like. She should write commercials. I don't know. I was going to say something. She should write sexy scenes if she's good at setting the mood, but I got, I, my, my mind is on sexy things this week, so. Um, but there are just some scenes. I mean, a lot of the book is like these teens are facing really scary challenges as a part of a game. Mm-hmm. And just like you feel that... Ugh, like that crushing sense of panic. Yeah. I'm trying to stop saying the word panic as much as possible, but there's the only way to do it. That, like, uh, yeah, you're right. There is no other word for yeah. panic. Um, uh, somebody the Sara said for us. Someone be a writer and tell us. <laughs> um, let's see. We also have a Revolution 19, or a Fugitive X contest going on over on pitchdark.com. The Story Crush Tour was announced last week. Yeah. The Pitch Dark Tour kicks off in February Boom. in New York. If you are in the area, come. You'll get a book shimmy tote with some goodies inside. You'll get to meet us. You'll get to see all it the It will office. be the best day of your life. <laughs> if you are not in the New York area, we will be streaming it to your faces. Mm-hmm. To the computer. Streaming in your mind. Um, what else should we have going on? Um, do you want to, next week? Mm-hmm. Oh, right. It's a very special week. Mm-hmm. It is the Book Shimmy Awards. La, la, la. La, 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 la. Um, um, so we're not going to have time to really share with you what's new next week. So we're going to do it now. Fake ID. We met the author. By Lamar. Lamar. Gilles. Giles. 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 Damn, so bad. People need I'm to so like, bad at when this. I meet somebody, be like, spell out your last name. Like, say the last name. The first and last. Um, Matt, Matt Crazy just gave us all of these words for panic, and I Angst, love you. anxiety, stress, yes, intense, intense emotion. It feels. Feels. <laughs> um, fake ID, it's a contemporary thriller. Mm-hmm. It comes out. Mm-hmm. Avalon by Mindy Arnett. This is Firefly, the teenage years. Yes. Like, 
for reals. I love it. I love, she knows how to write her space dramas. And are you guys ready? Her space operas. Oh, ever true. true. It's the last yes. book, guys. Final book in the Everbound series. Are, you guys, are people going to need series ending hugs next week? Because we're gonna give them out. We're gonna get. We're gonna dull out the hugs. Is there anything cool? In we'll any? make. We'll make hug gifts for everyone that needs and ever need hug gift. I like looking. Peek under that one. See if there's anything. Ooh, oh, it just says Avalon. Avalon. What about fake a D? Oh. oh. There's like a shadow of the boy on the cover Look, running. That's cool. It's called Debossed. I Ooh. learned that today. Instead of embossed. And then this shiny stuff is called foil stamping. I learned things. <laughs> um, so these are this Look is for these yeah. next week. This is next week's bounty book bounty book bounty. And then the following week Woo. is a big bounty. You got Cool Beauty, Into the Still Blue, Her Dark Curiosity. You got Infinite. Oh my god. You got Uninvited. Oh my god. Your minds will explode. <laughs> um. So that's happening. So, prepare yourself. Okay. Now I want to do a fun thing with Aubrey. And you all as well. This quiz, I want to give Aubrey a quiz. It's up on our site, on epicreads.com. Log in so you can take it. We will give you the time. Mm-hmm. The quiz comes from The Promise of Amazing. And it is, which 80s rom-com is your love life? Okay. So, I'm going to ask Aubrey the questions and you consider your results as well. Okay. Or just take it on the site and you can tell us your results. All right. I haven't. I don't know this quiz at all, so I haven't taken mm -hmm. it yet. That's why Margot can't do it because she. I put it up on the site, so yeah. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Would you describe your personal style as a practical, B trendy, C quirky, or D feminine, <laughs> femi practical? Practical. So A practical. I mm -hmm. like. I like me a comfy pant. <laughs> <laughs> okay, number two, karaoke time. What song are you belting out? Wilson Phillips, hold on. Okay. Is that an option? It is not an option. Okay. But, well, it's quite an equivalent. <laughs> a, the Surrey with the Fringe on Top from Oklahoma. Excellent song, by the way. Excellent song. I would sing it, but then we'd get in trouble with our leave permit. <laughs> uh, that's why we don't have music anymore. We got in trouble. Happy Birthday by the Beatles. No. Oh. If You Leave by Orchestral... OMD. Okay, and In Your Eyes by Peter Gabriel. In Your Eyes. Okay, so D. D. Number three. Your most embarrassing moment was when A. You ran into your ex looking as disheveled and disgusting as possible. B. You sent a gossipy text about your crush to your crush instead of to your best friend. Mm -hmm. C. You broke up with your significant other in the middle of school and caused a little scene. Or D, you showed up at a party extremely overdressed. You looked like a princess, but everyone stared. B. B. The texting. I, mi I miss texts all the time. Okay. Four. Your favorite physical feature of a crush is hair, mm -hmm. l arms, mm -hmm. lips, or eyes. Arms. Arms? You're an arms girl? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I would not have thought that. They hold you and they make you feel so nice. And they lift you up onto that counter. And they <laughs> <laughs> okay. And People are already taking it. I'm excited to see your results, but I don't All know. right. Question five. Where do you stand on the age-old question, can men and women be friends? A, no way. They think they can, but someone always falls for the other person. B, maybe. You could never imagine falling for any of your friends. C, yes, definitely. And sometimes friends of the opposite sex are the most important friends. Or D, probably not, because if you really thought about it, your friend wouldn't be the worst person to fall in love with. C. C. Okay. And six, final question. Your yeah. favorite TV show is A, The Carrie Diaries, mm -hmm. B, Anything on Bravo, C, Sons of Anarchy, or D, Downton Abbey. Out of those, Downton Abbey. Okay, so you were tied. Oh! Okay, so you have two movies. Okay. Even though that's not how the results are going to show up on the site, but that's what I'm... <laughs> that's what I'm going to say. Okay, so you were... I'm going to pick one. Just pick one of them. So pick B or D. B. B. Your movie is 16 Candles. Yes! <laughs> 
Dreamy, perfect, totally unattainable. These might be some characteristics <laughs> you would use to describe your latest crush. Oh, yeah. Making your love life totally 16 candles. Is your husband totally unattainable? He's really dreamy. Is he dreamy? I think he's really dreamy. Oh, that's so cute. Especially when he wears glasses. Okay, so what did you guys get? Yeah, love, what are your results? Tell us. Um, let's see, Justine says, I got 16 candles, cupcake girly. Got 16 candles, are right there. Mm-hmm. Um, and Libris Veritas, my love life is 16 candles. Book hangovers, I love your Twitter handle. Mindset is say anything. Um, Lan or Lance P.A. reads, um, I'm pretty in pink. Of course. Nice. Smiley face. Uh, Reader Adventure, also pretty in pink. In your eyes, like... Oh, Tiffany Alea is telling us what O.M. D yeah, is. It's, I couldn't just, I couldn't get Orchestra there. Orchestral, yeah, I couldn't. I, yeah, yeah. Orchestral, <laughs> mine, when I I'm took. I'm going to have to look them up. My, when I took this quiz, I was When Harry Met Sally. Oh, yeah, what does that say? The peanut butter to your jelly, the yin to your yang, the ice cream to your pie. On the side, though, of course, you fall in love with your best friend. Your love life is most like When Harry Met Sally. Oh, And that's true. That is the true. The boy of my heart, we started out as friends. Actually, we started out as competitors, but then it came friends. <laughs> it became friends, yes. Um, my, so, ooh, that kind of fits, because my now husband was my boss. <laughs> Very unattainable. Unattainable. Very unattainable. <laughs> um... Cool. So, oh yeah, and just one last thing. There is a list up on our blog. Um, Kathleen Hale, who wrote No One Else Can Have You, which is which is one of our fights. Somewhere. I think it's holding up too. Oh, there it is. Okay. One of our faves so far of the year already. It's very bizarre. It's very bizarre. And she gave us ten things that were cut from the book. For being too ridiculous, which is was kind of absurd to think of because this book, whole book is ridiculous. Yeah, like the first, you get through, like just go to the bookstore or just go to the browsing side and read the first yeah. bit and you're like, what's in her brain? <laughs> it's so good. So there are a few things on this list that even if you haven't read the book, you'll find hilarious. Number four is my favorite. <laughs> I, I knew you would love that one. Okay, so number one, Fang Road, which is an important road in the book. Mm -hmm. Fang Road was originally called Fang Boner Road. Road. This is an actual road. She saw it while driving from Wisconsin <coughs> to New York. I did find a street sign of Fang, Fang Boner, Boner Road. <laughs> I bet I get stolen a lot. Probably. I think it's up on like one of the highway things, so it's hard to steal. Fun fact that I learned while I went to Colorado. Yes. And Colorado now keeps getting all of their 420 mile marker signs stolen. And so it's now, the 419.99. Yes, now they have to change them all to 419.99. Which is, in my opinion, an even better sign than 420. I know. <laughs> 420, so lame. So lame. So overdone. Um, okay, number four on this list. Kippy's obsession with Diane Sawyer was rivaled only by her fascination with Rod Stewart, <laughs> whose music she often danced to naked. That's so Kippy. I know. <laughs> the local hospital was originally named Wang Dong Memorial Hospital. A character in the book, Jim Steele, was a lawyer, and his law firm was originally <laughs> named Butman and Butman. I, I sort of sensing a theme here. Yeah, yeah, butt jokes. Yes. That's why uh, she's a lady who's right up my alley. Right. And finally, the local funeral home was called Hang Boober Funeral Home. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's actually a funeral home in Michigan. <laughs> Probably. I had a whole conversation on Twitter about boobs yesterday. I was thinking about if you replace the word boobs with books, you could use them interchangeably. Like, I've got giant books. I like, yeah, the, I like big books. My so. books are super flat. <laughs> you want to feel my books? <laughs> feel them. See? Nothing to grab. So flat. I like when you caress my books. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the library, and the librarian said I could check out her books. <laughs> Anytime I wanted. <laughs> we're going to be here all night. <laughs> Just kidding. We're going to YouTube now. <laughs> all right. So that's it for this week. Oh, right. Um, we're giving away 10 copies of Salvage by Alexander Duncan, which Ooh. we talked about earlier. If you have, I'm reading it this week, so if you win it, you can read it with me. If you have um, tweeted along and watched and, again, tweeted along. <laughs> uh, I'm so eloquent today. Uh, you, Using hashtag tea time. <laughs> hashtag tea time. You are automatically entered. We will pick 10 winners and tweet them out 
shortly. Oh, and I just see um, Courtney Stevens says, first 10 tea time peeps to send their Addy to channelingbrave at gmail.com gets some free faking normal swag. So, one more time. <laughs> Courtney C. Stevens, author of Faking Normal, she's going on the Story Crush Tour, just tweeted, first 10 tea time peeps to send their address to channelingbrave at gmail.com. Get some swag. Mm -mm. Some swaggity mm -mm. swag. Mm -mm. Do it. We We're gonna love you, her. Courtney yeah. Stevens. Retweet. There you go. Okay, so um, so we are saying bye now a little mm -hmm. bit early, mm -hmm. but if you want to go to our YouTube page um, and see us fuddle around some more. <laughs> Is fuddle a word? I don't know. Sure. To, like, do that. Do that. We're going to do that on YouTube for another 15 more minutes. Uh, and next week, we will see you at 3.45 on Wednesday over on YouTube for the Book Shimmy Awards, <laughs> where we will announce the winners, your chosen winners for the best things that made you feel things, mm -hmm. all the things in 2013. We will be dressed up. We expect you to be dressed up. So Tweet us your pictures of you dressed Tweet up. us your pics. Find a pretty dress. Tweet us your options. We'll tell you which one we think is best. Yeah. You know, we're here for you. So. Oh, yeah. I want you guys to tell me what to wear. <laughs> Maybe we take some pictures and we can tweet them out and everybody can decide what you'll wear. Okay. We are so, like, Amy Poehler. Oh, yeah. Today. We basically are. They should just have us host the Golden Globes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Well, we could not never be Tina Fey. She's got big books. <laughs> anyway, we'll see Amy you. Amy Poehler's got little books. She does have little books. Okay, so <laughs> we will see you um, next week Sweet. if you're not going to follow us over to YouTube, so... We We're going to follow you. us over YouTube. We will stop giggling. Okay. Bye. Bye. La, la, la. This is when I do a little dance and I am awkward. <laughs>